match underway in the 120th All-Ireland Hurling Final gets going. First point of the day from a free for Henry Shefflin. Not collected that time, however, but it is with Larkin coming through. This is dangerous. He's Eddie Brennan inside. Goal! There's another opportunity for Fogarty this time. First time stop, second time buried. Two in a row for Eddie Brennan. Two goals in the space of a minute. And the Kilkenny Cats look to be on for their three in a row. It's quite a victory for Kilkenny. There was never any doubt. The final whistle, they beat Waterford by 23 points. The management doing a terrific job. The most complete performance in an All-Ireland final that I think I have ever seen by one of the greatest teams, if not the greatest. I'll leave that to hurling historians elsewhere. There's some team. It's three in a row. Well, who's to say it won't be four in a row in 12 months' time? Well, it sure was. Dan the Man, good evening. Good evening. Great to have you with us. And Ken McGrath, great to have you on the line as well. How are you doing? How's things? Not too bad. Not too bad. So, Dan, do you two come across each other at all around Waterford Way? I didn't see Mac with a while. It's the first time you see him in a long time, so I'm delighted to see the man boy. So, um, <laughs> we usually meet each other on the road there, like that, that way, like you know, but um, no, I didn't see him in a while, so it's great to see Ken boy. I guess that's just the way it goes. Ken, do you see many of the lads often? Uh, no, I, I'd see him a bit in the road, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think the coverage isn't great there. Now. I, I missed this, I was just say there, but uh, oh, I'd see, I'd be up around Dungar from the Google uh, delivering the coffee and Dan delivering the oil. He gives me a little beef in the, in the truck and I give him give a wave, and, and that's how it about is. And we might be sure the odd time in the summer, an October game. But uh, like that team back in the 2000s wants to be meeting each other at all. Uh, we chat away, and it's just a, such great camaraderie there with all the gangs that we had. You know, uh, there was a group of lads there for probably six or seven, eight years that. We'll always get on great and have uh, great memories uh, for that game, really. <laughs> but, uh, no, look, it's, uh, it's great to see him again. He's looking, looking cool and stylish as usual. <laughs> Dan, Dan, did I see that you're lining out for Liz Moore this year, your 28th club season? You still got it? Um, I thought I did, um, to be honest with you. But, uh, <laughs> no, I did enjoy this um, kind of player coach this year. So I had come on a few cameo roles. Like, you know, I'm just going well in training, but... The legs are saying no and the head is saying yes, if you know what I mean, like, you know, so I know I enjoy it, I love going to the field, I love going to the training, whether it's tough, whether it's not tough, like, and to be able to do it still is, is great, like, you know, and clear as the head as well, like, you know, go up and have a poke around the lads, like, you know, and when I see a fella passing me out and I don't go and catch him anymore, like, you know, I just leave him off, to be honest with you. <laughs> Ken, are you still poking around? No, no, I'm, I'm finished uh, since 2012, so look, it's, uh, it's an unbelievable credit to Dan to keep going. Uh, to be driving on his club, I suppose, at that age, it's it's, it's fair achievement. And no, 2012 was my last game. Uh, then I sat about by a point in the county semi final, and uh, my legs were gone at that stage. My legs were probably gone uh, three or four years mm -hmm. before that. I soldiered on, just tried to do the best I could. But no, uh, yet yeah, I was 34, I think, when I, when I packed it in. And it was early enough, I suppose, for uh, for club hurling. But I, I couldn't train, I couldn't enjoy it. I was only getting frustrated. I was, I was only around probably. Get myself in trouble on the pitch at that stage, uh, hitting younger lads. So it was, uh, it was no good, no way to finish, you know. Dan, by my reckoning, you two came into the panel pretty much around the same time. I know your debut was '98, though I think you were in and around the scene a year or two before that. Ken was involved from '96, and you know what what happened then was a great period in Waterford hurling for younger listeners. There was a, an All Ireland semi final, first Crow Park appearance since 1963 in. 1998, there was uh, Waterford winning Munster for the first time in 39 years in 02. There were Munster finals, uh, Munster champions in 07. You win Hurler of the Year. So things are going really, really nicely under Justin McCarthy. So if we go into 08 as a way of getting to the All Ireland final of 08, Clare beat Waterford to people's surprise. Justin McCarthy is gone a few days later. Davy Fitz ultimately comes in. What was going on behind the scenes there, Dan, that, that, that things weren't right for the Clare game and, and Justin called it a day? Jesus, that's a tough one to answer for now. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose, no, it's, no, it's, I suppose after the Clare game, like, you know, um, Justin had given massive service to Waterford, like, you know, and as a group, we, we made the decision like, to, to, to go for go with a change, like, you know, um, that, that dreaded picture, as I always say myself, like, you know, that one of the biggest regrets I have as a player that didn't shake that man's hand coming off the field because I can assure you, Justin McCarthy did a lot for Dan Chan in his career and Walter Hurley. So he did, like, you know, and it was time for change, I suppose, and we, we, we rallied together, like, you know, and we all know what happened after that. Mm. So that moment where you didn't shake his hand, that photo, that was just like a, a heat of the moment thing as opposed to you and him and yeah. your relationship was gone? 
Oh, I, I, to this day, I have, a, I have a great relationship with Justin, to, to be honest with you. Like, you know, um, it was definitely he's the moment thing. Um, I was being taken off. I wasn't fully fit. I was mad with myself more than mad with the management, to, to be honest with you. We were being well beaten. Um, and that's just one of the days that that's one regret I have in sport, just one or two I have, is I didn't shake that great man's hand because what he'd done for Walford Hurling and his predecessor too, Gerald, who laid the foundation, but Justin really took myself and, and Ken a, a long way as with other lads in Walford, Walford Hurling. What he's done for us off the field, what we won, won on the field with him, we'll never forget to be, to be honest with you. Ken, what's your recollection? Was it a case of players pushing him or Justin jumping or a bit of both? Were things not right at that stage? No, I don't think things were right. Uh, and as Dan said, look, the man uh, done so much for me as well. And all the boys, in all fairness, uh, I don't think without Justin, we would have won the muster titles and having probably the success or the whatever success we had for the six or seven years. Uh, what he done for Walter Horn, and as Dan said, with Jerry, the two lads from, from Park were absolutely brilliant for us. And they were, I've seen that so many times, aside of my father, he's the biggest influence in my career. But at that stage, um, without trying to be smart or, or, or putting it bluntly, the relationship was probably... Uh, came to it as a natural end and I think we were probably beaten so much in semi-finals over the years and probably so heartbreaking and so dramatic in some of them semi-finals I think at that stage in 2008 um, the relationship was after coming to an end and, and sometimes it's hard to know when you should step away or not step away and unfortunately Justin kept going and I suppose he, he lost uh, the dressing room at that stage and uh, as Dan said you have regrets in your career and uh, that look was was probably the hardest uh, month I ever had in my career as well. The way the way we, we treated him wasn't right, you know. And looking back on it now, you'd say uh, it, is, it is a huge regret because there's more to life sometimes than win a match just and, and win hurling games, you know. Right. I mean, that is a very tricky one when you're very grateful for everything he's done, but you're at a point where you feel, well, we're not going to get over the line as things stand. Your careers are short, Ken, I suppose. So you obviously felt, look, we have to make it known to county board or whoever we need to let know let them know that you know we're not happy to continue that's that is tricky i can see the regret i can see why he acted that way at the time as well yeah it's, it's, it is a tricky one <clears throat> it's hard to explain yourself at times you kind of go right we have great respect for the man which we had and yet you're probably in essence nearly stabbing him in the back if you know where i'm coming from but we we felt at the time we had something still uh left off or we felt we the time was slipping away we had to kind of act now that we wanted to win all ireland uh, and, and we, we made that decision. In all fairness, we stuck to it as a... we done it as a team. We, we stuck to it. After the couple of meetings we had, we stuck to it. We always... We, we never kind of went behind uh, the scenes on what happened at that meeting, really, you know, and said... Uh, but, look, it's... Uh, when, when a relationship comes to an end, uh, who, who's, who's the right person or who's the right part of a relationship to make that decision? And, unfortunately, that time, we made the decision, you know, and mm. I felt, and I said it before, before I say it again now, I felt the county board should have made that decision for us, probably in 07, and saying, Justin, look, that was an unbelievable five, six years. Uh, we think, look, it's probably time to move on and go maybe a different direction, and we wouldn't have him there, I suppose, the hassle. And, and, and look, the upheaval that man had, not us, like, what, what, what we done to him, obviously, would have hurt him, to mm. be honest about it, it's uh, your players are, are are saying you you want a change, and that's that's unbelievably tough, you know. Yeah, I can imagine. Terrible. To, you mean, Dan? You probably feel almost dirty having the meetings behind his back. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I never forget the meetings we had in in Tramore, I think Majestic was at the time, and um, you know we did make that decision as a team that it was time to move on. Like you know, I, I still have utmost respect for Justin McCarthy. He always will. Mm. To be honest with you, like you know, he gave me an opportunity in zero four. Didn't work out for two years under Justin. But I, I persisted with it. Came in in zero to four with Jerry Fitz. Came in and, and never never looked back. Like you know, these things happen in sport. I suppose some people are saying player power. This and player power. It was never player power. Like you know, and we were never like that as a team. To be honest with you, it's just as Ken said there, maybe we did the county board's job that they didn't do it in mm. zero seven. Like I say, thanks to Justin. But again, I, I have the utmost respect for the man. Like you know, and always will because mm. the stuff he did away from the field and uh, with holies and with with individuals themselves by going to the ball any worker, et cetera, et cetera, was, was unbelievable. Like, you know, and, you know, I, I, I can't, can't thank him enough, and I guarantee you, Ken, or we can't thank him enough for what he's done for us. Yeah, and, and, and I mean? it kind of feels like a contradiction what we've done, but we did it because we, we, in the best interest, we're probably being a bit selfish ourselves, you know, and you would like it, and looking back, you go, uh, and then you see him, or, like, I haven't seen him uh, personally uh, since, so that's very hard, like, for a man who, who gave us so much, you know, and we gave him a lot back as well, but, 
you know, for, for the way it ended was uh, definitely definitely something you would regret, you know. No, you can hear that in both your voices and, and see it in your demeanours. And Ken, when you meet him now or meet him down the years, is there animosity, is there silence, or would you have a chat? I never met him, to be honest. Oh, you, ha uh, you haven't seen him uh, since? Right, sorry, I thought you said you had seen him. No, I haven't, and that's, uh, that's a right. sad thing, you know. And I've often uh, spoke to Tony, obviously I'm great friends with Tony, uh, Tony Brown, I work with my own brother own. Uh, we'd often talk about Justin, and often talk about uh, how it ended, and we loved to, uh, at some stage, meet him. And, and you know, sometimes, I, I've said it before, I said in the book that when things go a certain distance, and you're going to go, how do I make that approach again, you know, to probably putting the hand out there and saying, look, can we, can we have a chat or whatever? And mm. I, I suppose then life gets in the way and you get on with things again. But, um, no, I've seen something put up actually on a Club Dacia for the, for the Walford team on Sunday. When you, when you hear him talking and you, you see the passion he still has for Walford, you kind of, you always just feel a bit sad for them trying to be uh, yeah, no, over dramatic. Totally. Wouldn't you, Dan? Wouldn't you? You yeah. always just feel a bit sad. You know? yeah, uh, I, I've met Justin and I was very, very nervous of meeting the man um, after the, the way... The way things ended, like you know, and but I can assure you, should we shook hands with a great chat there about the hoarding, etc., etc., like you know, and there was no hard feelings. Yeah. Uh, that just goes to show the respect that we have for each other as well. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I was delighted to meet the man because I didn't have, I wouldn't have met him, and to get that monkey off my back, if I'm being honest with you, to meet him and say hello to him and give him just a, just so relief because for myself personally, because of that photo, etc., and this and that, and. Mm. Just to meet the man for for to relieve the pressure off me was unbelievable. But I can assure you that that's it. To meet him, right. I shake hands and have a chat with him. I, I was we're on the same boat, aren't we? We're yeah, on the same boat, hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Would you know what Ken Ireland's a small place? Someone will send this to him. Nothing sure. Ah, yeah, yeah, no. Men are terrible. Would you not have picked up the phone sometime in the last twelve years? No. <laughs> oh yeah, there's not. <laughs> that's probably harder to do. To be honest with you, that's that. That's not the right way to do it either. Over the phone, is it? You know, so. you know, but I uh, know it's, it's definitely it's, it's not probably the best. It, it, don't, it don't hold us in the best light, to be honest. You're not not making that approach to him, you know. Uh, and at times you kind of go right, you know, like I often spoke to my wife on about it as well. And you kind of go, uh, what what do you do? Or should should I make the approach or not? And it's never done it, you know. And it's probably it might be a thing I'm great at doing, uh, mm. making approaches like that. But uh, when, when you see him speaking, and he saw it actually yesterday, and you kind of go, ah, oh, Jay's look, that's what I. You know, like you would have massive respect for him, obviously, and what he done, what he done for even the current team, because the team we played on, not a young lad, you know, be young lads watching watching the team we played on, you know, and seeing the bit of success we had. So, be hoping that we helped do what's happening on Sunday as well, you know. Yeah, well, look, sure, something you can probably do soon enough, anyway, one way or another. Um, five days later, I mean, the king is dead. Long live the king. This is sport at its most uh, ruthless. Five days later, Dan. Davy Fitz announced as Waterford manager. Did you get a say in his selection? No, as far as I know, to be honest with you, um, I think it was not doing all the ins and out and that. And just that within five days, he had the job got um, again. But you know, really prof professionalism when he came, like you know, and Morris Geary and Peter Quiddy came with him um, at the time. So two, two, two great men. But again, look, look, it is. We didn't go out. We didn't mention any names to anyone about anyone getting in anyone like that. Like you know, they, they went away and did that. Like you know, and he came in and done a fairly good job. See, I mean, you, re, you regroup through the back door. Antrim, Offaly, Wexford in the quarter final. Tip, you beat them by two points in the semi final. Ken, what did Davy bring? I mean, the professionalism, the intensity. I can all imagine. You know, what what was it that he brought to the party that maybe he had been looking for? I suppose even a bit of freshness um, when, when things have, as, as I said early on, when you're getting to a stage of semi-finals, and I think that was our fifth semi-final um, in the way to something probably different needed to happen, and it was it was kind of a whirlwind summer. Dan, I tell you, it was a uh, it was it was a mad few weeks, and he brought a, a bit of freshness. He brought a good bit of freshness. Then he brought, I suppose, uh, he was young, he was hungry in his in his managerial career, and he brought good lads with him, as Morris Geary, Peter Creedy, great wall for lads, and. For some reason, the whole thing just kind of clicked. Now, we got a decent enough run. Mm. And we got Antrim, we got Offaly, we got Wexford. And uh, even if we weren't even going great, we would expect to win them games anyway. And um, we got to semi final and we were primed uh, actually for semi final against Tip, weren't we, Dan? We, we actually yeah. were, uh, we, I'll be honest, uh, we, we knew we were going to win that game. And uh, 
uh, things just went well that summer and we got we got to the final and I suppose that's where after that the minute that whistle went against Tip, that's where the, that's where it ended really, you know. But uh, yeah. going into that tip game, definitely not in that semi final we were we were spot on for it. Uh, I think we had six points to nail up the one starting off in the game and we definitely tore into him and probably Tip weren't maybe expecting that as much because we were coming under the radar of it, you know, but we, we were ready for that semi final and uh, look it was it was a brilliant feeling to finally get over the line, you know. Dan, what was the build-up to the final like then? We're talking Kilkenny, peak of their powers, they're you know about to win three in a row. Obviously, you're hoping to stop them. Uh, w there would have been great excitement. There would have been great hope. Can you remember, was there a confidence? Like, I mean, you would have been massive underdogs, even in Waterford, I presume. We would have been, to be honest with you, with that, the, the, the team we were playing in the final. But I think David, to his credit, um, really had, had his homework done. He had a settled down well. He didn't have... A, he never sorted out for the other final, if you know what I mean. The ticket situation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The players, everyone was set up properly for us, like you know. So um, I just think it didn't happen on the day. Maybe Dave got things wrong. We got things wrong, definitely on the feed ourselves. Um, so we did. But uh, again, we just made one of the best teams that ever played hurling. I really came out, and I suppose you know, for us to be good, Kenny at the time, we had to have 25, well, 20 lads playing very well, like you know. And on the day, I think there was only a handful of lads really played well, like you know. And, you know, it's, it's one regret. We, did, we didn't um, go out and play off the cuff like we used to. I would love to have seen Justin McCarthy in an Ireland final and the way he would have prepared as well. Like, you know, if you know what I'm saying, from 0 7, if we got there against Kilkenny, what way Justin would have prepared. Like, you know, but David had us well tuned in to his credit. Like, you know, and um, did we get the match or try to get a few things wrong? Probably did. Let's be honest about it. We probably did. But I, again, you know, it was, a, it was a great day. It was a great occasion. But we just didn't come out that day. Like, mm. You know, we made a massive team. Um, that just absolutely hurt us from after five or ten minutes. And when, when you say, Dan, you didn't play off the cuff, was that the plan going out? Like, were you trying to almost contain them? Or what do you mean by not playing off the cuff? I suppose that, like, there was there certain individuals um, picked out to maybe get a hill of car, if you know what I'm saying, yeah, that we'd, up, we'd upset Kenny that way, like, you know, and maybe set a focus in on what we should have done and played hurling, like, you know, and, you know, it's hard to really know, to, to really get it right now. But again, this was the way Davies for Davies walked, like, you know, he goes, Try and get inside the Kenny's head, get inside Cody's head, maybe and get in get. But I think he'd only rattled Eddie Brennan, he got two something within a few minutes, you know. And Tommy Welch came out, came out of the blast, caught a ball over Shamo's head, etc. Like, you know, and so you can't really, you can't go out and add fuel to the fire with these fellas because they'll hurt you, like, you know, and they really hurt us. I felt sorry for the support at that game, and it's because yeah. Ken is probably more down the city side of it down, down there, like, you know, when you're, when you're Kenny and Waffle and see, say, where's Cock and Cock and Waffle up where I come from, like, you know, and, um, we just left the supporters down big time that day, like no. But we enjoyed the occasion, like you know. It wasn't the result we were looking for, like no. But to, to, to play in an Ireland final was it was it was always every player's dream, to, like you know. But not to play like that, like you know. Let's be honest about it. But look, that's sport for you, like you know. You, you have your parker and get on with it, like you know. But like that's that's why I keep saying like it, it take these chances because they don't come around very often. Yeah, they sure don't. Ken, Dan's talking there about some uh, mistakes, and look, everyone makes mistakes. It was Davies' first. Um, Day on the scene, he has since proven himself. But of course, everyone's going to make mistakes. Do you do you share that regret? Do you remember a focus on almost trying to rattle Kilkenny or upset Kilkenny, and maybe not have enough of a focus on just going out and cutting loose the way, like Jesus, your team could? Yeah, but I, I'd be honest. Uh, the team that played the away final to the team that if we got to the final in 07, there was there was miles apart. And I know that sounds a bit strange, Dan. I tell you, it was only a year in the difference, but. Difference in that team alone. Um, look, I suppose. Look, it was something. It wasn't. It wasn't overly done. That we we're all trying to like do something to the Kenny players. But certain positions, we, I suppose, he said, right, we'll have a crack off and have a rattle off. And look, we've been in that situation. I've been in that situation with the club before. Mount Sinai, your experience in playing in county finals, and you'd see stuff before a game or when the whistle goes, and you're going to go. You knew you, you had your team, that team you were playing best, you know, and I think that's what happened that day. And I suppose at the five minutes, Kilkenny knew what they were, what was, what was two or three minutes, they knew what was happening, they knew what they expect. They were so used to playing the finals. And ah, look, it was a, it was a day we never turned up. Uh, when we all said that, as Dan said, probably uh, not even a handful, a handful of players played well that day. And we needed 12, 13, 14, 15 of us playing up to a certain level to compete for them. Mm. Uh, but unfortunately, look, it was a non-event, a non-show from us, and it's easily the biggest regret of your career. Uh, and the, the problem was, and, and I suppose it's always a regret of mine, never getting back to that stage again to prove that you could have been on that stage. Because I know for a fact that you, you'd feel yourself that you were good enough 
produced on that stage. And that's regret you'll always have. You see Northern final every year, and you see players play well in that game. You kind of go, I know I was good enough to do that, or why didn't I produce it, or why didn't I perform? And that's it, that's the thing to get around. Not that we didn't win the final because the Kenny were a far better team than us that day. Mm. But personally, it's a why didn't we perform? We were experienced enough to do it, and we didn't do it in all fairness. So we didn't, and we were. Yeah, we were poor. 100%, Mac, we, we, we could be Cork in, in most of the championship games, win most of the titles. Yeah, Cork could win the other like, you know, and if you know what I'm saying to you, like, you know, and they, were, they had the mentality to get over the line and beat the Kilkenny's, like, you know, we struggled to beat them in the semi finals, or like in, like, in Clare caught us in the semi final one year as well, like, you know, and it was just a big disappointment that we didn't get to us as a team, the players we had deserved to get to more than one or any final. But that's, that's, that happens, that's sport and that's life. You have to park it, get on with it. And, Go back the year after and keep going, like you know, but it doesn't happen like that. Yeah, but obviously, there's and that's why, like, and it was a great team, it was, don't get me wrong, we brilliant matches. And we've we played none, but we, we lost three others in was a point. They weren't getting out of the gate in semi finals, so it was only one game we didn't show up for. Mm. Uh, but and when Ken, you get to a certain do you level, like, yeah, I was going to ask, do you do you remember Ken being a nervier than usual? 24 hours like at the hotel when you arrive are you are you like do I watch up for the match do I not watch up for the match like are you, are you, I'm tossing and turning all night or was it akin to semi-final kind of build yeah, what, what was your yeah. sense of it I, I, I felt and this is how I tried to describe it over the years it wasn't nerves it was more excitement and giddiness and I think that's what cost us we, we were we were like I know that might sound silly like I Young kids upstairs, they should be gone to bed now. Hopefully, I can't hear them shouting any better now. But it'd be like them in a few weeks' time for Christmas, can't wait on Christmas Eve for tomorrow. Yeah. Too excited about it. And some of you are too excited, couldn't wait for it. We couldn't wait to get on the bus to drive through the crowd to get the Pope Park. Couldn't wait for it. And then after three or four minutes, five minutes, when they came out wrong, I think we were so excited and so built up for it. We were so deflated then, it was hard to snap out of it. And that's how I felt. And right. I know people are saying that's nonsense, but. I, I was so excited. I was so couldn't wait for this for my whole career for. It. So after maybe ten minutes, you're kind of going, ah, this is nearly gone. Yeah. No, and that was hard, wasn't it, Dan? To really yeah. get your head around yeah. it. I walked yeah. around the parade that day, uh, and I didn't feel any different to any game. Or as in, like, I thought we were going to win the game, uh, and obviously we, we didn't. We, we got hammered. Right. That's how I felt. But on the parade, I felt like that. We I mean, the ball was thrown in for the. But it was a probably over excitement, and uh, you're leaving all your probably emotion, you're leaving your energy. In your excitement before you play, yes, the, 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 the nervous energy and then the flatness that follows. How, how did you feel, Dan? Were you, you know, pumped up and feeling good the morning or nervous? Yeah, I think I went to mass that morning. Would you believe that? So I did. Obviously, the prayers weren't answered, but um, <laughs> but uh, no, it's, I wasn't, I, right, I, that was I, that I, normal. Now, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I would have, I would have felt this was kind of saying there. I would have been uh, at the latter stage of my career, I suppose, like you know that I'm. Um, I wouldn't be that nervous going into the game. Like it is tough. Like, win, win one ball, then take himself, get on the ball, get on the ball. But I can, I can hold my hand up high and say, I'm the best holder, one of the best in the JJ Delaney, like you want. Nice. Old Hickey, them lads, they were, they were absolutely hotter than hot, like you know. And you, you can see, you can see how badly missed they are now when you look at the, the Kilkenny team that's there now, like you know. But again, I, I felt great going into the game. Like I thought we'd ever done right. We trusted the man, so we trusted ourselves. Davy, as I said, to his credit, had Everton done. Mm. So he did to, to his best ability what he thought was right, and we backed him in that. But it just didn't work out. I was, we, met, we met probably the best team that will ever play hurling, let's be honest about it. Probably. I was reading John Milan a couple of years ago, was writing in the Irish Independent, and he was saying Davy picked out every player's favourite song and played it on the bus on the way into Croker. I don't know if you remember yes. that. What was, what was your choice, Dan? I can't remember that anyway. <laughs> I think I don't remember that. So I said, Venga boys for Dan or something, was <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. You know, to be honest. More Wolf Tones, man, Mac. No, Wolf Tones, yeah. No, but I know, I can't remember. No, I can't remember that either. Fair enough, fair enough. You're, 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 maybe, maybe your heads were gone more than me, Tom. Maybe they were, you're in the haze. So come here, come here, like, half time. Like, I didn't watch the second half of this match, you know, so I don't, I don't remember a lot of this. <laughs> Just as, as a neutral, it was easy to check out pretty quickly, and it was Jesus Kilkenny, bloody hell. Uh, half time, five points scored, and Kilkenny have put 216 on you. So, what's that dressing room like at half time? Like, there's no point saying, lads, we're still in this, even for a game of hurling. Like, it's so, it's so obviously over. I mean, yeah. do you even bother saying, let's go win the second half, Ken, or is it just a fairly shattered atmosphere? No, well, we were obviously, look, you were shocked, you were shell-shocked. I don't think, like, 
any of us ever had that in our senior careers before, uh, especially playing with Waterford. But I don't think we were ever, we were never bet like that. We were, to be honest, towards, I suppose you look back on, I played 51 championship matches for Waterford. I'd say the, the most we ever lost by, I'd say, were five or six points, I'd say, about that one, you know. So we were there at half time. And I think, we, we, look, naively still, and this is where uh, another regret, a few regrets actually, <laughs> point, don't we? But we're, we're clocking them regret. up here, Ken. This is turning what? into a counselling session. This is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what I need now. But uh, no, I think we should have probably saying, right, this obviously game, in our heads, we were saying, come on, let's get it going. We should have said, the game is obviously gone. It's just be out the second half and get a, the best competitive way we could have get the competitive. You know what I'm saying? Do mm. I, I, you know what I mean, Dan? I don't know whether yeah. we, we, did we actually think that we'd say, right, lads, obviously the game, looking back now, was stupid. Even remotely think you're going to get back into a game, but just get a competitive. Even win the, for, win the first few ball in the second half and try and even win the second half and just uh, come out of it with some sort of uh, credit, you know? But we, we didn't, and I suppose it, it just went from bad to Wall Street, you know? Yeah. What's your memory of halftime, Dan, or do you ha can you remember? Yeah, yeah as, as, as Max said there, like, you know, the one thing we did is we try and win the second half, so I can remember, and especially for the fans, you know, it, it was massive that we go into a perform something for the second half, like, you know, but Kilkenny were just, and you know, Kilkenny, they, they'll steamroll you, like, when they get a chance, especially to Walford, like, you know, because the, the rivalry just down there, like, you know, and as Ken said, you weren't ever going to win the game because... They were so good at, at the back, like you know. And um, but again, it's just the, it's just the way it went, like you know. Just um, we came out in the second half, didn't happen for us again, like you know. Sometimes you have to take punishment, like you know. We took we took some punishment that day, as Ken said. We were really beaten like that, like you know. And to be beaten in the biggest day of your life like that, it hurt for a few weeks after. To be honest with you, well, I'm surprised only a few weeks. I mean, uh, so do you, back to back home, do you even do some kind of do you get a homecoming, Ken? I'd say you feel almost mortified to have people welcoming you back in, but they, probably a bit of a homecoming was there? Yeah, that's what I'm saying you'd be embarrassed, like the, the overriding feeling the whole lot was you're embarrassed, you're embarrassed like personally I was embarrassed for I think I was, I nearly finished my career nearly, I, I was I was really permanently embarrassed um, on, on that senior stage after that because I, 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 I question why did I leave myself to play like that, why didn't I cope with it, why didn't I do this, why didn't that? So I think that's what we, the team was embarrassed. And we even that night we stayed in the Burlington, it was a bit of a shambles. It wasn't Dan there were I think the, the hotel was uh, I think it was I don't it wasn't the whole whole thing wasn't right. And then the next day you're back on the train and now we had a great old spirit obviously with the, with the gang of lads we had and if you trying to you're waiting for an iron final your whole life you, you see teams come back on trains and you see the way they're having a crack up, but we were just, we were actually in the dumps. You know, a few beers are just trying to kind of switch off. And I said to you, we, we all got on so well, we were so mm. close. You're getting back into Walford City, then there was thousands to see us, you know. And that was, you are saying you have to go up in the bus, you're saying, geez, do I have to go up in the bus? And you had to, you had to show the respect for the people that were, were supporting us for years. And uh, I was one, geez, very hard hour, hour and a half there. You're going through there thousands of people, the last night about to see us. Yeah. It is, you're embarrassed, just you're looking. You don't know where to look. You're looking on the ground more than, than up, you know, and it was, uh, look, uh, Dan said it, it was yeah. an extremely tough few weeks and, and a tough few months after that. And, you know? and, and you sort of half said it there, Ken, are, were you being serious that it did have an effect on you as a player going forward that much? It did. It did. I, look, I, I, was, I was 30, right? Um, legs were, were active. I was in two operations that year. I was I was struggling to come back. I, I, I missed that clear game. I was struggling with injuries the whole time. I was... I was constantly trying to fight back to get fit and, and up to a certain level to compete. I'd done it that summer, uh, probably, and then obviously the final didn't go well. And I did, I questioned, I, I, I look, I'd be honest, I probably thought, I overthought a lot of it uh, in, in my head, really. Uh, in 2009, I, I, I got injured in the first game against Limerick, so I, I missed all that summer. So it took me nearly 2010 before I could bury one or two of the things that were in my head, thinking about, am I good enough to play? I, I came on the iron semi point with Dan. A few of us came on against Tip, and I got three or four points, and I had a couple of frees over, two or three points in play. And I remember saying, "That's if that's me done, that's me done." I, I showed to myself that I could still do what I was able to do with that iron final in both the biggest game of your career. It can't define you. Do you know I'm coming from? It, like because mm. it didn't go well. I, I left. I built it up too much in my head that I, I thought it defined the end of my career and even the team's career. Do you know what I'm saying? Which is probably it was stupid, really. Stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can, I can understand how it happened, but of course, anyone looking at Ken McGrath, Dan Shannon, the first thing they don't think of is 08. You know what I mean? They think of those amazing 
Munster Championship matches, Dan, they think of you in 07 and Hurler of the Year and scoring a gazillion goals. And, and 08's part of it, but like there's also an understanding that that Kilkenny team were just a bit special. I mean, obviously, when we're talking about 08 now, it's going to be the focus. But I don't know, Dan, do you feel 08 overshadows what she did as a team and what she brought as a team? I wouldn't think so, to be honest with you. Like, you know what? Um, you know, as you said there, we, we, we massive days ago, like, seven more up to winning monsters and all that. Like, you know, you're, when you're winning, it's great. But when you start losing, and the way we lost, you know, it, it just wasn't us. You know, so it didn't. As I said, as Ken said there, this, this is sport. Like, that you, when you lose, it hurts, mm. and it still does. Even for me personally, losing a club game, it still hurts, and it has to hurt. You know, and it did hurt. But what do you do? Do you pack it up? Do you stay with it? I was at, like Ken said, I was at the end of my career. David was bringing in his own style of play. But I thought I was good enough and he didn't. Do you know what I'm saying? I wasn't good enough because Lakes, Davies game was all about running. Mm. And I was coming into my career, like, you know, and to his credit, like, you know, I stuck around for a couple of years there. Like, you know, I wasn't getting game time, much game time. I was going well in training. 08 was a tough year for me. Coming off a senior holder, getting holder the year in 07 brings a small bit of pressure. So it was the fact that I was a bit, bit more experienced than other lads have had to get in it probably helped me a small bit. Like, you know, but I did feel the pressure from in 08. Um, after we getting hollered the year the, the previous year, like you know, they felt a bit of pressure. I wasn't getting a goal here and there. Why weren't the scoring the goals? And I can assure you, I trained as hard as I did in zero seven, in zero eight, than I did in zero seven. Mm. I didn't change anything. I look back at my diary. Am I doing this? Am I doing this? Am I this doing this time? This time last year, that kind of stuff. And I was. It just wasn't happening for me. And some days you have that. There's Premier League soccer players getting thousand pound a week. They won't score for ten days. They're they are being questioned. So that's the way sport is. Like, you know, you have to take it on the chin, the good and the bad days. I have plenty of good days. Mm. I have one or two bad days. Like, you know, that was a massive bad day. Jeez, I'd love a read of your diary all the same. I'd say that's a bit of a page turner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the writing, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I read it myself back? <laughs> but no, but even, sorry, Joel, even like, say, look, as a, with that team, in all fairness, and, look, and this were, i probably contradict myself again here. Yeah. Like, when I, we came along in 96, 97, if someone told you you'd play in wherever we played in eight or nine, ten Munster finals, seven or eight Ireland semi finals, win four Munster championships, a league. Yeah. I'd say you're joking. Do you know where I'm coming from? Yes, so, yes, in yes. saying all that as well, you do obviously look back and you'll be proud of what we achieved, even though we didn't win the big one. You'd still be proud of what that team did do, you know, which is, uh, which, is which you can't take away from your yourself or, or the team that you played on, do you know what I'm saying? But, well, look, uh, 100%, your, your team has stuck in people's memories more than other teams who have won, won All-Ireland. Do you know what I mean? And, and so, like, there's different ways to measure what a team brought to the picture. Like, there's a text in, for instance, from a Martin here, and he says, without doubt, one of the best teams of all time. They may not have won their All-Ireland, but those guys were just amazing. They got me into hurling. So, like, that kind of counts for for something. And here we are talking about that match. You know, it's because your team stuck in the memory that here we are, what, 12 years later? Geez, time's flying talking about it. Dan, you were there in 17, obviously. Um, what, what's the vibe in that dressing room where you're not beaten as heavily versus the way you were kind of decimated in 08? Is that easier for those boys to take in 17, for you to take? Um, no, to be honest with you, um, it's as simple as that. It's like we, we, we did get heavily beaten in 0 eight, but we still got beaten in 17, like, you know, and... Yeah. Do you know, it's when you're beaten by a point or 20 points, it still hurts. Um, we thought as a management that we, we had a great opportunity going in that day to, to beat Galway, who Galway had struggled to beat over the years. Like, you know, we thought we'd ever done right. So so we did, like, you know, but again, it didn't happen for us on the day. Like, there was one day, it was the one time, I think, that Galway beat Waffle in, in a championship game was the all Ireland final. Um, one or two teams, that Galway got lucky with that way. Tony Key, do you think I think it really inspired inspired Galway's performance that day and stuff that went on a half time, etc. Like you know that that other times it didn't happen for us. But I just on the day of Galway were just that bit better honest. Like we were disappointed we didn't win the game because mm. as I said, like a great opportunity. You don't get to these these finals very often. No. You and don't. Galway took their chance. You look at you look at Galway, they took their chance in seventeen, like you know, and they haven't been back there yet. Like they got to the final, but they haven't won it since like, you know, so they took their chance. We didn't take our chances. Mm. Which brings us to the weekend, Ken. Um, Liam Cowell's done something with this team. Geez, they're going at they're going at teams. You know what I mean? They're 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 good fun to watch as well. That second half against Kilkenny was something else. So how do you see the weekend? Limerick are obviously phenomenal. Yeah, look, I, I suppose um, I would have always at the start of the year, or I suppose such a mad year as well. 
way things have panned out. But I, I felt that Limerick were the favourites for the other, and I, I probably would still say that. Uh, but I, I, I think there's going to be very little between the teams on Sunday. I, I think we've uh, we've improved even I think 20, 25 percent since the Monster final. Uh, the confidence the lads have gotten uh, from beating Clare uh, the second half against Kilkenny. Uh, the, the players who are stepping up, the leaders that are being shown on the pitch, and just a new said, Joe, the style of play, the, the bit of just the, the, the bit of flamboyant scene in the team again is, is, is brilliant to watch, and mm. you're on the edge of your seat watching watching this team play, and just the way they're going about their stuff and uh, their, their their energy levels, their work rate, their commitment, uh, they're a joy to watch. They're a joy to watch, and I'd be honest, it's uh, really after getting the the people behind them. Uh, and, and look, it's it's a massive game for him again. As Dan said, well, it's our, our third Iron final in, in 61 years. We don't mm. get back there too often. Uh, but a few of the lads have been there only uh, three years ago. Hopefully they, le- they learned from that day, which uh, obviously was at that game three years ago. We had a massive chance to win that game and a bit of luck we could have done it. So there's players there will, will realise that you have to take your opportunity when you get a chance. And I, I don't think this is a, it's, it's a nice game for Limerick either. It's hard to beat the same team twice in the one year. Uh, and we have a bit of pace, uh, and our team is after developing over over the, the championship, you know. So I think we're uh, I think we're going into this game in a lovely position, uh, and, and hopefully, and I think we will. I think there'll be very little for a couple of minutes to go, and we'll we, uh, we, we be right in with, it, with a chance, you know. And I just think it, it could be a, a great classic all Ireland. Yeah, here's hoping. Dan, is there excitement in the county? Is there bunting up or their flags? And how do you see the game? Yeah, the, the bun thing's been unbelievable around, especially doing that and there was what happened been in, in the East, like you know, but um it's unbelievable, like you know, and every household has something out the window or something. So to so for the time of the year and what's after happening, it's massive. It keeps the people going, it breaks up the winter, um, so it does. It's so talkative all we speak about water being in the Northern final. It's massive. It's absolutely massive for the county. Mm. Don't get me wrong, we're playing a massive Limerick team. So we are. Um, I did say at the start of the year, whoever beat Limerick would win the Ireland. Waterford, they with a chance. They'll want everything going right. Let's be honest about them. They'll want everything going right on the day. They'll have to go for 80 minutes, including the injury time, non-stop, non-stop, non-stop. But this is a serious Limerick team. So it is like a serious Limerick team that have been cruising through the championship. Mm. Have, the, the people are saying they haven't gone into fifth, fourth, fifth or sixth year. Maybe they have they, they, they have to be left by other 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 counties getting to fifth or sixth year, but they're winning games. Galway came back at them, they pushed on. Waterford came back at them most of the point, they pushed on. But I do see Waterford here having a massive opportunity. Because their ground is dry, the ball is fast, they have a serious chance to to be honest with you, like you know, and but again, they'll have to bring the second half performance, not the first half performance. Because if you give them an nine point lead, they won't lose it. Mm. But I give give Waterford a great chance going into the weekend. What have they got to lose? Two horse race, Limerick are red hot favourites. They've beaten him already this year. Liam Cal is in a, and, and his management team are in a massive situation here, as are the players. Kevin Moore is going to be third or Ireland final. They, the experience they have now, like you know, uh, again, with, with what's in the camp. You know, Liam Cal has done it as a player, he's done it as a manager, but it was tipped in the 20s, 21 minors. He knows how to win all Ireland. So if he can bring his experience uh, and Mikey Babins, I, I think Walker have, have a fair opportunity next Sunday. Well, listen, fellas, thanks so much for the thoughts for the trip down memory lane. Loads of text messages coming in saying people really enjoying the chat and hearing from the, the two of you, and uh, it was great. Thanks for all the honesty as well. Loads of great stuff in that. You can give each other a good beep on the road next time you see each other. What are you beeping on Monday? No, open, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can can. Dan Shannon, Ken McGrath, thanks, fellas. Enjoy the game Sunday. Best of luck. Oh, thanks, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Off the ball on News Talk.